I really, really do not like the America's Cup hydrofoil ships. So let's talk about that. The 2013 America's Cup featured hydrofoils on their sailing vessels. And that was really impressive, but I do not like them. Because from my viewpoint, they introduced a lot of dangers. And it's time to talk about the dangers of those hydrofoil ships and some possible solutions to those dangers. No discussion of hydrofoils would be complete without addressing their application to the 2013 America's Cup yachts. Those catamarans screamed across the ocean, flying on innovative hydrofoils. The crew constantly struggled to balance the foils against the wind and extract every last point of speed. It made excellent drama and energized the sport. But with all that excitement, we sometimes forget how the crew jeopardized their lives in every single race. I'm not an America's Cup racer. I'm an engineer. DMS engineers seek to preserve life while pushing for new innovation and greater achievements. That does mean greater speeds when we're designing racing yachts. So there is certainly some overlap and some shared interests. This video presents an engineering perspective on the America's Cup hydrofoils in the 2013 races with options for improvement. I'm not just going to poo poo them and walk away. I think they are part of the racing community and I think that further improvement is needed. First off, before you sharpen your pitchforks, let me make this clear. I have no problem with hydrofoils on sailing vessels. They work fine together. We possess the knowledge to design stable sailing vessels with hydrofoils. Not an issue. The roll stability under hydrofoils reacts similar to a normal displacement yacht. Under wind forces, the yacht heels over. This changes the angle and submersion of the hydrofoils. Various systems of control react to adjust the foil forces and balance out the healing moment from the sails. That's well enough understood. On attack, the vessel switches directions of heel and the foils on the opposite side take control. Wait, the opposite side foil. Ooh. These yachts target extreme performance, which is pretty fun. In pursuing those extremes, the yachts include the ability to retract the windward hydrofoil from the water. That improves the speed, it reduces their resistance, and it eliminates any passive stability in the foil system. Hydrofoils don't work in isolation, you need the whole system. By all rights, that yacht should fall off a of foil at the point that you pull the windward foil out of the water. The only thing that sustains foil flight in this unstable condition is the crew. The crew carefully balance the healing moment of the wind against the hydrofoils. This is really not easy, and my hat's off to them for doing that. This is the equivalent of balancing on a high wire while someone keeps shaking the wire, while running at 40 to 60 knots. I really do compliment the crew for being able to sail with those hydrofoils. The challenge of sailing hydrofoils adds to the fun. But as an engineer, I focus on the large increased risk to life. I'm concerned with protecting life. And sadly, these risks are not theoretical. They've already progressed beyond theory into reality. While training for the 2013 America's Cup, sailor Andrew Simpson was killed. The yacht capsized, Mr. Simpson became trapped under the solid sections of the yacht, and emergency divers failed to locate him in time. If you check any Google search on Andrew Simpson, you can find further details. That's difficult to deal with. We have people, even skippers from that yacht, saying the boat is too powerful. But at the same time, they are also saying this is the sport. This is what they want to do. And they're saying that it's a risk they're willing to take. See, I accept that extreme sportsmen like the America's Cup sailors, they're going to demand new challenges, and they're going to love that. But I can't accept that those new challenges should jeopardize your life. And looking at the vessel owners for this incident, the owners didn't think that it should jeopardize the life either. They weren't just hoping for the best. They took a myriad of precautions and safety features to protect the crew. They had helmets, 
body armor, knives to cut free of rigging, emergency oxygen bottles, underwater training for the crew, emergency divers always following behind. As an engineer, that tells me some very important things. It tells me that the racers were not reckless. They carefully thought about safety, and they planned out the risks. But those preparations were not enough. So we're starting to ask, are we preparing for the right risks? Now this is probably about the point where some of you are sharpening up your pitchforks, ready to label me as too conservative and not understanding racing. But I still have to say racing is part of ships. And beyond all other requirements, ships must protect the lives of their crew and passengers first. The current AC designs for sailing hydrofoils disappoint in this area. But we're not going to just throw in the towel and forget about hydrofoils. I'm not arguing for that. Engineering gives us the tools to work that problem and develop new solutions. I said before that I think we might not be protecting against the correct risks, but we still have an interest in protection. That's great. So maybe we need to reassess that and understand the fundamental risks of these sailing hydrofoils. For me, the basic problem is speed. Speed is inherent to hydrofoil sailing. It's always expected. But think about the consequences here. If a small dinghy capsizes at 5 knots, the consequences are pretty minor. But capsizing at 40 plus knots, regardless of how you got up to that speed, that carries a much higher chance of injury. We can even do a heuristic comparison for these speed predictions. This figure indicates fatality rates compared against ship speed. Now don't read too much into this. This figure was actually based upon pedestrian collisions with motor vehicles. That's my source for this one. But still, it's a good indicator. It shows that we have much more severe danger above 30 knots. That's over seven times more risk of fatality than if you're traveling down at lower speeds below 30 knots. Think about that math, that 10% fatality rate and how heartless that comes out. That's saying that if you've got a 12-man crew in the boat, on average, one to two of them should be dying every season. I think that's a little too high of a risk. Nobody wants to remove the hydrofoils. I'm not going to argue for that. I think they should stay. Members of the racing industry desire that challenge. They want the instability because it makes it more fun. Awesome. In that case then, we need to accept and anticipate more crash stops and more capsizes. They're going to happen. If we want yachts designed like fighter jets, give the crew the protection of a fighter jet. We're looking at five-point harnesses in the cockpit, fully enclosed cockpits to, present, to protect against collisions and capsize. We want that cockpit to be watertight with its own emergency air supply that can kick in even if everyone is knocked unconscious. We want all of those safety systems to work even if the crew are unconscious, because that's very possible when you're talking collisions at that speed. We want a bottom escape hatch so that they have a way out after the capsize. And we want fail-safe design in the sail rigging. Personally, I think the America's Cup designers understand that this is necessary, and I think they're going to get there eventually. I, at DMS, I don't see engineering as an obstruction to new challenges. I think it's there to be used as a tool to identify the risks, as we've done today, and find solutions to them. Engineering gives us the tools to try new ideas and evolve them into safe technology. And it's important to go from risky idea to safe technology. That's the fun part of engineering. And that's the fun part of racing, I think. With the proper planning and risk management, we can implement hydrofoil sailboats in a safe manner and ensure that it's nothing but pure fun. Thanks very much. I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.